Hello Capital Sci-Fi Con Virtual Edition 2021 fans. We are nearly getting to the end of the evening. We've been going since 10 o'clock this morning and it has been action-packed and non-stop with live Q&As, music from Darth Elvis, Blues Harvest, Amy Swift, interviews, and you've heard from some of the families from Rachel House Hospice and from Chaz, who uses services. Um, I've enjoyed watching everybody interacting together um, and uh, sharing pictures and images from previous events and stuff. Make sure you're voting for the cosplay competition as well and take part in our auction, our raffle and everything else that's going on in the page. The auction and raffle will be going on right through till Tuesday. So you can bid on the Peter Capaldi signed script, the Emma Thompson bathrobe from uh, Men in Black 3 as well. But now we are here for our last live Q&A, which is the Predators Q&A. And we are joined by Louis Ozawa. How are you doing, Louis? You okay? I'm great. Thank you for having us. Well, thank you for joining us. And we're also joined by Oleg Taktorov. How are you doing? Excellent. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm slightly starting to get tired now, but we're getting there <laughs> yeah. on the home run. Um, and as always, we have got Des joining us for this panel. He will be hosting the questions to our two guests. You are live, so we need you to send in your questions that you want to put forward, and I will read them out at the end. So without further ado, I will hand over to Des and enjoy the Q&A. Thank you, Keith. Um, before anything else, I just wanted to say, oh, like, thank you for being so considerate towards Keith. You are the only guest today to ask how he is doing. So that's very kind of you. Well, I know <laughs> he couldn't stop talking for the past six hours. And <laughs> His throat is incredibly hoarse, but that's just the determination that that man has. And it, it just goes to show how sweet and kind you are as well, sir. So thank you for that. Uh, so I, I'd like to get the ball rolling is that uh, by saying obviously uh, you both have appeared in uh, Predators and the Predator franchise is a very popular franchise uh, a lot of people are aware of it uh, I'd like to start with uh, Louis by saying uh, before you went for this were you aware what you were auditioning for and if so did you feel any hesitation any trepidation going for the part um, no I mean I was a, as a as a young boy, I was a big fan of the original film. Um, so I knew about the franchise. They, they didn't hide the fact that it was a reboot of Predator. Um, but, uh, you know, I was an unknown, you know, out of work theater actor at the time. So I had um, no pressure on me whatsoever. I, I just, uh, you know, was happy to put myself on tape. I had no expectations whatsoever. That's fair enough. And you're. Uh concise and straight to the point nothing wrong with that uh oleg was it the same for yourself were you aware of the franchise going in and was there any trepidation going towards it i got the interesting story i mean it's uh, it's uh, it's a life story yeah <laughs> before predators there was a film uh called uh, last arc i believe oh yeah i mean it was a spielberg's project uh, indiana jones i think the last one and mm -hmm. my friend got the part yeah and uh i i had a meeting with spielberg and i read the script i told him steven i'm sorry i can't play this i can't i can't do uh, save it say in uh, private ryan uh, for free or whatever but i can't do this i can't come back to russia after and i say but i have a friend who would be perfect for this part Igor Zhikin. so the Igor got the part i gotta say that i was kind of kind of feel like should i i should not and the biggest reason why I think uh, that I should not is that because the filming uh, was at, in Hawaii. So he spent almost two months in Hawaii mm -hmm. filming. And a year after, Igor Zhikin called me, Oleg, hey, um, and I just came from Russia just for one week to uh, get my, my kids to school and uh, just see them and uh, say, hey, I'm, I have a boring job in Russia. I gotta come back and it's gonna be horrible. Um, fall uh, well uh, and eager call me and say oh look why don't you go for an audition and there's a, some film called predators it's a bunch of russians there i said sure so i went for an audition and since uh, you know i always 
<clears throat> use this expression. My muscles was, was, uh, were ready. I was doing some, um, some TV series and I had the great part. So I was warmed up. Muscles, active muscles were ready. So I had a pretty good addition and I forgot about completely, I left. So I'm working in Russia and it was the worst job you can imagine. Oh, okay. <laughs> host of some TV, uh, yeah, host of some TV show and I'm working on a minus 18th floor in Moscow. Everybody's smoking around, Oof. it's a hell. And, <laughs> I get a message on the internet, Oleg, uh, October 5th, uh, we will, you know, you got the tickets, you're flying to Hawaii. You got the part. By the way, you know, IMDB, I was the first one who actually got uh, my, my name. That, that's it, I'm, I'm, I'm in, a, in a movie. I'm like, and you know, you know where I was? Well, my, my, my first question was, why do I have to fly over through Korea? Isn't it faster go through San Francisco? I mean, that's stupid I am. I mean, that's the, like <laughs> the famous question. Of course, people who purchased the tickets, uh, they lived in Texas and they, they didn't know that uh, uh, our earth actually is a ball. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyways, I was extremely happy. And, uh, all this flying, I still remember every moment. A lot of fun. Then I met the boys. And I remember first uh, dinner when the whole crew were sitting together. Uh, me and Nimrat and Tal had a, a one shot of tequila. Everybody else, they say, we, I don't drink. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I got to work with these people. <laughs> 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 then I found, I mean, they were cool people. It was uh, uh, Luisa Zavacicciana, a person who got involved me in, in a tea drinking, he told me great news about the teas. I can't repeat this because uh, it might have <laughs> helped his business. And uh, I got uh, my buddy, uh, Maher Shalal Hashbaz Ali. Nobody remember his name, it's only his mother and me. And I always call him Maher Shalal Hashbaz. Would you want to drop a glass of water? And everybody called him Ali. And I, of course, uh, other guys, they, they were great. It was awesome. We had only a few people, but it was a blessing. I mean, being in Hawaii, in my case, it was a double blessing. I had to carry a minigun from a helicopter plus the accumulator on the back. So it was lots of fun. You know, it's 12 hours difference. You want, to, you want to sleep, but you're in the jungle hearing all the stuff around. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Nimrod. Thank you, uh, Alex, uh, who wrote the script. It was a Jewish guy born in Ukraine. And that's probably why my character actually has been created. So I think <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And, and you, you came across a, a good point, or like at the beginning, you said that you were muscle ready. And everybody kind of, kind of surmises that the, the Predator franchise, it's, it's, it's manly, it's testosterone. And obviously you're running around a jungle, you've got guns. Is it as awesome as little eight-year-olds imagine it would be running around the jungle with a gun. Is it as fun as we imagine it to be? Um, be honest. Well, right, right now, I think it's great. I mean, uh, well, I remember only positive uh, things, but uh, mm -hmm. so many times, uh, just think about it. You're in the jungle. You know, that, that some uh, islands, uh, more people die from falling coconuts than uh, in uh, car accidents. Yeah, and we got coconuts flying all over the place. We got uh, uh, roots; uh, you can fall over. Uh, I mean, and the rain, sun, the rain. And, uh, I mean, to me, it was fun. The more extreme, the, the more fun I have. That's just my life. You know, I'm sure I, Louis I've Sanger. got an old like story to, to share oh, regarding share. coconuts. <laughs> my man would pick up one coconut after another every single day take those things and crack them open remember that he would be every them single open. 10 minutes <laughs> every two minutes until somebody was like you know that's a laxative you probably shouldn't be eating that much <laughs> coconut <laughs> but no um we had a great time i remember spending my 33rd birthday with oleg we were paddle boarding in you know hilo bay they chose you hilo to paddleboard Right? That was so much fun. Uh, 
Later yeah. on, uh, we someone told us how there was allegedly a 20 foot tiger shark in that same bay right around where we were, uh, where we were paddle boarding. But, um, you know, one of the reasons they chose Hawaii was, um, you know, the original location in Mexico was too dangerous at the time and other other jungles where they'd have malaria and Zika and all, all these sorts of things. In Hawaii, there are no natural predators and or of those sort. Um, and, uh, you know, no poisonous snakes, uh, insects, that kind of thing. The only thing was, yeah, like every day it rained, uh, um, you know, right around noon, it would rain. So we'd start at five in the morning. The reason most of us weren't drinking or some of us weren't drinking was we had to get in shape for shirtless scenes. So, uh, you know, uh, until then I was not drinking or having any dessert. Um, after the fact is another story, but, um, <laughs> we were definitely, um, you know, a group um, in Hilo. I don't know if you remember. So like the restaurants would close at 8 p.m. So we would work from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the. Oh, oh, I think usually break. Because so constantly from that point on, we are always drenched in, in water. Did I lock? Yeah, we, we just we lost you. We lost you briefly, oh, okay. but you're back now. Sorry. Um, no. Yeah, yeah. So um, as you know, I was in a, a wool suit, so I pretty much smelled like a wet sheep for the entire three months of our shoot. <laughs> but aside from that, you know, like for me, especially because it was my first, you know, my first Hollywood film of any kind, let alone being one of the leads of this, you know, of this uh, fr huge franchise. Um, it was an incredible experience to hang out with guys with Oleg and everybody, you know, everyone had such a you know, a respectable career. Um, and and uh, it, for me, it was just, yeah, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that I was getting paid to run around a jungle holding a gun and acting like a badass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you said, Louis, that you came from a theatrical background. Did this uh, help you in any way? Because uh, theater acting and screen acting are two different principles was it a difficult transition for you or were you able to acclimatize easily that's an interesting statement i ever heard most <laughs> <laughs> different principles. yeah no um well you know um i got my mfa in, in theater um i think ali mahershala was the only other guy actually in the group who had as well he went to nyu i went to brown a lot of the other guys had, you know, kind of come up doing just acting from a really young age. And most of these guys hadn't even finished high school, let alone college. Um, and uh, when I showed up, I, I thought, oh, my God, I don't know how to do this. But, um, you know, my I also had a martial arts background, which was one of the reasons they hired me for for this and in specifically in kendo. And so and I you uh, serious about the fight. That's I right. Yeah. You brought the, uh, for you, you're using your own money, your coach. Yeah. And uh, I brought he was a nice sensor. man. Always think about how to make your fight better or uh, always think about the uh, choreography. And, uh, and uh, you, were, you were ready for it. I mean, it was great. Your mindset, you could, you could yeah. definitely see it in, a, in, the, in the film, how serious you were about it. This is your Thank last, you. last fight. You got to kill and maybe die. And uh, you can definitely transmitted it to the screen so thank Lara, you Oleg Russian thank you people love that uh, so that means a lot coming from you because I really you know I don't know what it's like to be a professional fighter but um I did feel like all my training up until that point because it was really about midway through the film where we shot that scene so we we're already back in we we're in Texas now at Robert Rodriguez's studio um and we were shooting outside of Austin but the kind of the training that we had done, we'd started in, in Hawaii where we would be training, you know, six days a week with a trainer. And then, you know, and it got to this point where I would been choreographing this with my kendo sensei and the stunt team for about four weeks before we'd even, you know, step foot on set. Um, I felt like I was really primed and ready. And, uh, you know, that night was, we shot it over the course of two 14 hour nights in Texas where, you know, kind of like this winter, it was actually snowing. Do you remember how like it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was so cold? Yeah. No and, uh, you know, it was shirtless and being sprayed down with water and below freezing <laughs> temperatures. It was, it was an intense experience. 
if you remember the waterfall uh, we jumped into when we were running, uh, so, so, yeah. So we jumped in in, in Hawaii in uh, probably like eighty six degrees and uh, uh, <laughs> came out in uh, November in Texas was almost minus. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, right, they the started the first up. part of that sequence in Hawaii in the left. <laughs> we yeah. are all shivering. And, and two guys <laughs> with the two percent of body fat. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Walton Goggins, the great Walton Goggins, and uh, Adrian Brody. <laughs> I suggest I'm just kidding. You know, two percent body fat. I mean, they're, they're, they're really skinny guys. <laughs> they had to have a conversation, and they couldn't talk. We want to film it in the water first. So they were like, oh, 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 oh. and uh, uh, Nimrod Antal decided to move us to the ground and uh, let us dry a little bit, then yeah. spray with the water. Then they have a conversation. The guys couldn't talk. I mean, they were so. Their, their, their lips cold. were purple. Their lips were yeah. purple. And we wow. were pouring hot water um, into our wetsuits because they, they'd gotten us wetsuits, but they were too thin, the material. Yeah. It was, uh, and no socks. We had them under, no, yeah. No, no special yeah. socks. I remember yeah. I used my military technique. I put uh, paper under and I put a yeah. uh, uh, bag, plastic bag around it and taped it around. So it was a kind of, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of, I mean, warm water yeah. resistance uh, socks. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> peed in my wetsuit one or two times to keep it warm. I, mean, it helps, yeah. I was it wondering was how long it would take before the conversation went to urination. It only took 20, under 20 Amen. minutes. So thank you, Reed, for right. that. <laughs> and, uh, and Oleg, with your uh, particular background, you said that you were able to use some, some personal training with the wetsuit to keep yourself warm. Were you uh, teaching everybody on set just to help them be a bit more comfortable or a bit more into particular scenes? I think somebody actually uh, uh, followed my advice. I'm not sure who. It's been twice in uh, in Hollywood films. Mm -hmm. First was uh, uh, National Treasure. Yes. When we got uh, we were in uh, Utah and uh, L.A. <laughs> wardrobe was <laughs> buying the clothes, so we got everything warm all the way up here, from up here to to almost to the, to the feet. But we got the worst shoes, and I told him, I mean that's the that's the uh, army technique. We got the newspapers and I put it in and a uh, few layers and it was pretty warm. Shame, I mean, over $100 million budget, but no proper shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're sure. lucky because you had to, you got to wear shoes. I, my character was barefoot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so you I, are. I, I had those um, uh, Vibram five fingers. Yeah, funny because ones. it'd be impossible. Like the 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 ground in Hawaii was all volcanic rock, which sliced your feet right open. Um, and and in Texas, it was so cold, and there were scorpions and all this kind of stuff. So they they made me these uh, Vibram five fingers that they painted flesh colored, and put like a sock up to it. But those things uh, are not the most insulated kind of uh, material as and you can imagine. I just yeah. uh, just recall, and you know what? Also, you inspired me. Uh, you remember there was a volcano, you know, the, the mm. lava. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to say with who, but uh, with somebody <laughs> from, yeah. So we went uh, Russian way, not well, all the tourists go. So I went uh, to the beach and um, we walk all the way to the lava, to the, uh, or the lava falling. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, not just barefooted. I think we got some a couple uh, bottle of wine, so I think we were completely naked, <laughs> just walking there. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much fun. I mean, uh, it's, and it's great because uh, you feel the it's warm, then it becomes really hot, and then you feel like, hey, <laughs> I can just fall, I can burn there. So we turn around. Yes, yes. Um, the bottom of my sneakers were starting to melt. I, I, I thought I smelled rubber. And I looked down, I was like, oh, we should turn back. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you couldn't to... feel the lava was under the surface of the crust of, you know, right. we were walking on what we thought was rock. And we we're like, oh, shoot, we should turn around. <laughs> because our, use, our your style, around. Uh, use your character yeah. style. So it helped. Yeah. It maybe yeah. saved my life. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's this type of story that you wouldn't hear on a DVD extra. No, of course not. You, no. no, definitely not. No. 
No, there's a lot more stories we wouldn't share either. Oh, course, yeah. <laughs> well, if you, if you want to share something now, I mean, this is literally a safe space yeah. if you wanted to share <laughs> something. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, with everything that's that's been uh, that's been happening, a lot more fans have rediscovered the Predator franchise, especially with what's been happening over the last year. Um, are you kind of hoping that uh, the uh, Predator franchise will continue, and if so, do you feel that there's a particular direction that they should that they should go with it? Um, I'll start with Louis. Do you, uh, how do you feel about that? Um, well, you know what I what I do respect is a lot of people have been coming up to me, you know, even after all these years, about how much they appreciated, you know, the particular reboot that we were involved in, yeah, and how that was kind of a spiritual successor to the original and kind of a modern update to it, but it had its own character to it and its own integrity to it. And um, I feel really proud of it and something that I always feel proud of. Um, uh, it's it's really amazing that this franchise could last this long, this essentially be franchise that was, you know, a, no, no, a little movie that, it, uh, you know, just became this huge thing. Um, I would, of course, love to be part of that legacy if they choose for me to continue with that. I, I don't know. But I can tell you right now I'm working um, on a part of an anthology which involves the alien uh, as a writer, actually, with a uh, alien and predator kind of world. Um, nice. I'm, wor I'm working with a writer right now and it'll be published. I'm not quite sure when it'll be published, but um, yeah, I'll announce it when when the time comes. But yeah, so I'm kind of tangentially involved in that. And um, I really... You know, I, I, I personally have a, a, a very close affinity to the movie and for, uh, you know, it was my, my, my debut film and, and um, I, I have a very special place in my heart for Hanzo. So if I, if, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Oleg, uh, same for yourself. Do you, do you feel the franchise should uh, keep going? Of course, yeah. If we get a pred uh, Predators uh, 2, yeah. <laughs> think about uh, the first killer, killer of the first predator, Super Predator, Oleg. The number two, Luis. <laughs> and then go on. So <laughs> we would be in the history books. Yeah. Well, well, uh, should, should not end, yeah. Yeah, well, like, like Louis mentioned, we had the first films and then we had the alien and Predator crossover. So this franchise has has got some legs and with everything that's going on with comic books and video games, this franchise could go on forever. Who knows, Louis and Oleg, you may appear as your characters in a in a video game in a few years. I'm not saying you know, that is um, happening. I'd, I'd say we should have that. You know, I was- a, uh, We'll be in the Predator Hall of Fame. How's that? Yeah, like, yes. Uh, I was there in some purgatory retiree home. <laughs> <laughs> it's six champion, and now it's uh, 249, I believe, or 59. Mm -hmm. But you still, you're still the beginner. It's always cool. I mean, especially, you know, I was the first not non-American champion. And it does help, actually. It does help. It makes you- Makes your life more interesting because uh, new guys come and uh, they always want to go into history. That's that's on your time. Yeah, I've been enjoying watching your uh, um, your posts on Instagram, watching your old footage. Actually, you know, when we were doing pred Predators, this was pre kind of the explosion of YouTube, or there was no Instagram at the time, and so it's been great for me to kind of I all I could hear uh, I. You know, Oleg would regale us with his stories about when he was champion and uh, we would all sit around and listen at the gym. But um, it's nice to actually see the fights that he was talking about um, in, you know, uh, on the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, uh, the one thing I, I, I like to ask everybody is that you, you went into this franchise and you, you put your heart and soul into it, these characters, into this story. What has it been like since that? Uh, what's it been like meeting fans or uh, when you do conventions or even online events like this where you tell the stories? Is it, has it enriched you? Has it uh, helped your career progress further because of these characters? Um, Oleg, uh, you, you mentioned that when you got this part, you were back in Russia and you were doing a job that you weren't particularly happy with. Uh, has since Predators, has that helped? Had you uh, progress? 
I was uh, making a film in Syria, so it was before the war, mm-hmm. and uh, predators uh, came out in the Russian uh, theaters, and no one, of course, would support it because it's you know just Russia. So I had to fly. It was an interesting flight, and I uh, just uh, uh, opened up the f- premiere. Had all my friends supporting me. It was great, and uh, and well. Um, most important was uh, for me, at least, I had to do my voiceover and I used specific lines. I changed it a little bit. Uh, let's say it's more meaningful for Russians. Uh, my every single word had a meaning, different meaning. Uh, so, and uh, Russians uh, really appreciate what my character was saying. So, it was very important, especially right now. The longer uh, we are um, living, the more years pass after predators, the more young kids appreciate that you were the first, and what you did, what you said, how you did, uh, the more appreciated. So it's a, you're almost like a war hero. <laughs> oh wow, that's 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 <laughs> very anyway, yeah. yeah that 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 really yeah. uh, that's that's amazing to actually to uh, to hear that from you. Like and uh, Louis, uh, what what about yourself? I mean, I agree. I'm, I, ne- I, I never really thought about it until someone came up to me and said, you know, you're one of the few. Oh, I think we. In this world that can screen and with a sword. Uh, did you hear that? Uh, one of we... the few actors that who you can't hear. If we, if you, you just repeat that last repeat, no, no, you, just, you just cut off there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I never really thought much about it until. Um, I can't remember if it was a fan or a friend who said, you know, you're one of the few actors who've actually killed a predator. Um, you're in you're in a small club here. And I guess I'll always have that. And um, in particular with a sword. That's Arnold, right. You, me and uh, Edwin, I guess. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Four people. Yeah. That's true. Because if, if, you, if you actually think about it, even in the first two films, I think Arnold didn't even kill a predator. Because the yeah. predator committed suicide. Spoiler alert. Well, and, yeah, right. Yeah, and second, uh, it was Danny Glover. He only he managed to kill one. So technically, <laughs> both yourself, Louis, you know, like you are better than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Exactly. <laughs> super predators. I don't, know. Yeah. I don't want to go on, on record <laughs> saying that, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. I'll say it. You don't have to agree. I'll say it on your behalf. <laughs> Yeah, the predator were like a, like like a little uh, little kids. I mean, uh, uh, kitty kids uh, compared to super predator. Just think about it. <laughs> that, that, that's true. That's true. How much it's more it's... valuable to kill <laughs> super predator than predator? That's so, that is that's very true. So if anything, oh, like you're just making this way better than than what Arnold even attempted. Yeah, to we do don't even want to talk about Glover in this. That's good. But... No. <laughs> We'll leave that one for the next discussion. <laughs> uh, Keith, I'm gonna open. I'm gonna open this up if if there's any uh, questions from uh, from the viewing audience. Yeah, perfect. Des, thanks very much. Um, so uh, we have John Graham, and he said, "What is your favourite moment from being on set?" And we'll ask Ooh. Louis first. Oh man, every single moment, but I, I would have to say um, the moment we finish the fight scene um, after two extremely long nights, everyone else had left. They, they released the rest of the cast for, I think, the winter break. And uh, I, uh, it was the end of two 14 hour nights and you know the sun was about to rise. Everyone was in full Arctic gear and I was you know, came off the set and uh, everyone stopped what they were doing and started clapping for me. And uh, I, I, it was really a, a very emotional moment. I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, hold in the tears. It was really special that, that they would take that moment, all these kind of people to recognize the work and the hard work that I'd put into it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I felt many moments like that, but in particular that moment. It was very That's special. A, be- a beautiful moment to share with us. Thanks very much, Louis. Yeah. Uh, Oleg, what was your favorite moment on set? I guess the first scene, uh, 
first year when I had a problem with my minigun, uh, so it was pretty emotional. And um, it was important to start to start this way. And uh, when director loved it, he came to me, Oleg, just keep doing, keep working like that. I mean, I love it. And uh, that's it. You know, the rest was was much easier. So I got the direct and leverage and the tone. So it was not that easy and that smooth. Of course, somebody else was making little problems, but it's okay <laughs> to pass through this. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for sharing that, Oleg. Um, Stuart Wilson has asked, I think he's put this in a polite way. Did you get any souvenirs from set? So did you take any parts of your costume away with you or anything from the set when you finished, uh, Louis? Um, yeah, I kept my, uh, we all got one of these, right? With our names on the back. Oh, um, wow. I think the only one who's long her all hush buzz Ali. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everyone signed this. It was amazing. Like um, everyone signed this. And uh, I get, and then Nimrod gave me this actually, which was really pretty cool. Um, wow. I, I dug it. I dug this out um, recently. Um, just, just today actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, but you know, really the most, cherished thing is that I that I made some real lifelong friends you know and I um it's always good if I feel like we spent so much time because they shot it chronologically it, all day every day we had dinner together worked out together and so the friendships that I made with Mahershala and Oleg and Alisi Braga and Adrian Brody and Walton we all still like keep in touch and you know we're all over the world now but we all you know hit each other up with messages on text or social media, or even see each other in person from now on. Now and then when we're passing through in different countries, yeah. Nice, wow. nice. Oleg, did you get anything from set when you were finished? If you remember my, uh, my uh, short military, Russian, uh, it's more like the, it's only uh, two type of military has that kind of short. So there's either ones that uh, uh, fight coming from the water or from the space, I mean, from the, from the sky, how you call them. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Air Force Air, and the yeah. Marines. Air Force yeah. and, yeah, or uh, the water, uh, sea force. The Navy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Navy. Yeah. Navy. Yes. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's important. And you, you have to carry it. Uh, you have to when you put it on. You gotta carry the pride, and there's a certain way to 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 to, to, to keep it uh, up to the neck, and all those things. I was trying to uh, keep the right way. I mean, uh, yeah. I was calling my friends, saying if I if I'm doing everything's right, and uh, they were saying, yeah, it's, we're proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. So, oh, wow, awesome. I think I have it. Yeah, but it's in Russia. It's in Russia. Yeah. So it's yeah. a special place in Russia in my, uh, in my yeah. room. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, yeah. One, one of, uh, one of the, gir the girls, Alexa Hill, has um, a question for Oleg. And it's simply, out of all the martial arts that you do, what is your favorite style? Um, I like to judo uh, when I was young. And then I guess... Uh, I can't really say what I love the most because I spent six years learning uh, different styles. Uh, it just happens. I, uh, six years I've, I've been doing uh, sambo, six years judo, six years jiu-jitsu, and uh, six years boxing. After I was I was done with the UFC, I was just a hobby, six years. So I got uh, 24 years total just, just learning. <laughs> Wow, I love those sports. Any sports that can be useful in the real life, I, I like to study. I like to put attention in it. Yeah, that's that's impressive. Yeah. Next next question uh, from Robert Guest: When you were filming Predators, did you think that it was going to be as successful as it was? And I'll start off with Louis for that one. 
um, you know, no, I had no, no gauge for reference. I just know that uh, I went out to dinner with uh, Lawrence Fishburne one night and he said, are you, I, I saw an early cut of the movie. Are you ready for your life to change? And I thought in retrospect, it's kind of funny because my life didn't change all that much. And, yeah. um, um, you know, um, I knew it wasn't going to be on the level of the matrix. And I, 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 I but I, I, uh, I certainly thought we, we had good filmmaker making the movie and we had some great actors and we were putting in some great scenes. So I knew I didn't, I, it didn't matter to me what, how well it was due commercially. I, I knew that we, we had put in a, you know, a lot of hard work. And so I was very proud of that. So everything else was irrelevant. to me. And same to you, Oleg, as well. Did you think that it was going to be as successful as it was when you were filming it? Mm, no, I knew it's, it's going to definitely have some impact, but uh, of course you see certain things that uh, would not be uh, bringing this film to the level of the first one. And the first one is always, uh, so maybe what do we have? We have only Godfather 2 has been probably more successful than Godfather 1. That's it. It's only one exception. The yeah. number one is always, uh, always the best, always carry the most. Uh, so, but I knew it's going to be remembered, and uh, and like I said, uh, the more years pass, the more attention you get uh, from, the more appreciation you get from, from the fans. It's very yeah. strange. Yeah, it's like yeah. Every year you get more, more and more and more people talking about it. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, it's, it's perfect because you've just you just led into the next question perfectly, Oleg. Um, so as you say, the, the fan base is ever building. Uh, there's people that absolutely love the film, and there is always fans that go that extra step and dress up as the characters um, from the films. So Louis, have you ever had any um, fan experiences where you've met a fan and it's it's touched your heart or it's it's left a lasting impact on your life? Absolutely. Um, can you hold on one second? Because I forgot I have this. Yes, no problem. Uh, <laughs> it's going to come back with a predator skull. Oh, God, he yeah, is! He was <laughs> 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 what? Oh, wow. Yeah, really special. Um, wow. On my four, 40th birthday, actually, at, uh, in New York. Um, some gentleman came and, and gifted me this, which was really special to me. Um, it's so cool. <laughs> I had wow. this on my son's, my son's bedroom for a long time until he started getting scared of it. Like as a baby, I was like, oh, you'll never worry about it. And then, then my wife made me take it down. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Awesome. Happy birthday, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someday he'll understand. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sh thanks for sharing that with us, Louis. Yeah. Um, Oleg, I mean, we've we've heard that you've had a lot of love um, from the Russian community um, about your portrayals in the films. But have you? Is there one fan that stands out that you've met in the past that there's has really left a, a legacy and a mark on you? You asking for a certain person who stands. Just, just a fan who you've met, a fan um, who, who's um, left a, a, a lasting mark on you? Well, physically, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't think anybody would dare challenge you. Like. <laughs> yeah. well, I, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really... Um, I, I just got a part in a film, uh, Man from Toronto. So someone from the studio were my fans, and so they recommended uh, my me. So this started. They built up my character from scratch for the film. So it was kind of nice, you know, not working for the whole uh, COVID uh, COVID year. Not a Russian, not the United States, and get a job. Uh, <clears throat> it was it was perfect, you know, flying to Toronto. Stay for two weeks uh, in in the same room, <laughs> quarantine. 
I mean, I want to come back. I was getting paid for <laughs> for one week staying in my room. More than uh, for two months, I was uh, doing film in uh, Ukraine. So, oh, well, that, I mean, that that's at the end of the day, if a fan has gone through um, that effort to to make a character and, and a role in a film for you, that's that's testament to yourself and the way that you portrayed yourself uh, on screen. I could literally stay and talk to you two gentlemen and Des all evening but we are on a tight schedule um, and we have now come to 40 minutes into the Predators panel and that is... Let's say just a, one, I mean two things. Uh, first I want to say thing to Alex Litvak who wrote the script. He only had a, I believe uh, four weeks to finish it. It was a special offer from uh, Fox and uh, I think, I think he did a great job and uh, especially yep. taking a lot of stuff from the first film and um, giving me a lot of lines from Arnold, which is special, <laughs> I think, to him. And also, um, I want to say uh, thank you to our guys who played uh, inside of these costumes, uh, the Super Predators. Yep. They, had, they had a hell of a job. I mean, the, the, it was hot. It was, a, it was a, you know, a sweaty inside. So yep. they got people all over the face that were like, I mean, it's, 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 I really don't know how they could handle this job. It was, I mean, they had to walk on the platform like that, that big. Yep. Plus, like I said, the skin can breathe. I mean, it's, uh, it's they just yeah. ruined the skin while they were filming, but they were awesome. I mean, you get scared when uh, I, I could, I could, I could see through the costume, through the mask, who's inside. We had the two guys who were professionals, and one guy was uh, young, uh, the, the new guy uh, for the being um, Brian. Custom. Brian. Yeah. Brian. Brian yeah. Steele. He, yeah, I could see when those two guys were acting in him. He, he was kind of self conscious. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be scared of this super predator. But those ones, it's just the turn of the head. And you, your head is, I mean, <laughs> your heart is, a, is, is in your. Is in your yeah. heels. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just moves. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that love um, for your fellow actors. Um, thank you, Louis, for attending this evening. It's been thoroughly. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Pleasurable yeah. to listen to you talking. Thank you, Oleg, for joining in this evening. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you and talk to you as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're close to the end of the evening. Um, next up, we've got DJ Level Up Leroy, who will be playing a DJ set. So get ready to party in your living rooms, your kitchens, <laughs> your bedrooms, oh, wherever you are at home. Ooh. And then following on from that, we will have the end of show <laughs> with myself, Alexa and Falgan about where Capital Sci-Fi Con began and how it's been through the journey over the last six years. Thank you for everybody that's been involved in Capital Sci-Fi Con throughout the day. Much love to everybody. But ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Louis Ozawa and Oleg Taktorov. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.